I will talk about uh, the subglandular reconstruction of uh, breast cancer in uh, of uh, breast in case of breast cancer. The point is uh, that um, with minimum uh, physical trauma, we want to get the maximum oncology and aesthetic effect. In Europe, there appeared the first publications and um, uh, presentations on implants and reconstructions in a case of um, uh, breast cancer, uh, but it may be done subglandularly. First, it was about implants with polyurethane uh, coating. We really loved that idea. Of course, one can do the trauma. It's a multi-hour uh, surgery with a good aesthetic result, but then the rehab of such patients takes a very long time. That's why the simpler, the better. Everything genial is simple. And after a certain selection of patients, we came to a conclusion that we can try this technology as well. At present, we did surgery to uh, 23 uh, patients. Uh, the first surgery of a kind took place in the year 18. Among the patients uh, we present, uh, 12 uh, had breast cancer with uh, BRCA1 gene mutation. Uh, 40 implants were installed, 27 of those were with polyurethane coating, 13 were silicone implants of anatomic uh, shape. We had one complication, an implant extrusion, that was the one with a polyurethane coating. What may be the indications for this kind of uh, subglandular? reconstruction of breast. These are nodular forms of breast cancer in inverted commas, small size of breast, though the notion small is uh, rather indistinct, um, and uh, no big ptosis. What are uh, the benefits? Um, uh, that's simultaneous um, intervention, and uh, we solve the oncology and aesthetic uh, problems uh, simultaneously. If it's a big um, um, well, the breast is located on the big chest muscle, so that's where we install the implant, and the aesthetic result is quite effective. This method, of course, has its drawbacks as well. Like, for example, it's difficult or impossible uh, to have an intervention in case of a big ptosis or if um, um, escovalium uh, uh, complex is, uh, has a lesions. And if you use a polyurethane implants, you understand that not everything is possible. The contour, uh, the implant is uh, uh, absorbing everything, and it may get um, rotated. The contour, and they're visible on the uh, skin. And the silicone implant may get um, rotated, and rippling is possible in contouring of implant, especially if it's a polyurethane. Uh, well, uh, for the reason of lymphomas, polyurethane is not used in such case, but that's not the topic of my presentation. So the implants that we install do not get integrated into the surrounding tissues. Uh, they are free located in the capsule, so the probability of rotation is pretty high. As for our experience, we didn't have any rotation yet. The first surgery was conducted in the year 18. I've already mentioned that. Now let me look for the following slide. That's the presentation of our patients. This patient, aged 42, she had um, her positive uh, cancer. Uh, we did subcutaneous mastectomy on the right with a simultaneous reconstruction with a polyurethane um, um, coated implant. No synthesis surgery was conducted. And that's how she looks like a year after the surgery. 
uh, she didn't uh, want to achieve symmetry and the other breast to be uh, touched, but to our mind, we achieved good aesthetic result. Um, the second patient had breast cancer, a luminal um, hair positive, luminal B. After the neoadjuvant um, uh, chemotherapy, she had subcutaneous mastectomy with subglandular installation of an uh, implant with polyurethane coating. And uh, the contralateral uh, breast was augmented. Um, you can see quite well uh, that uh, some uh, rippling took uh, uh, place and the contour of implant is um, visible. So this may be resolved. Uh, there's a good technology to resolve that, uh, like lipofilling. Next patient, uh, she had a genetic um, uh, breast cancer after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. I'm pleased to rip, uh, there was a complete morphological regress in that patient. Uh, we did um, a double-sided subcutaneous mastectomy and simultaneous reconstruction with anatomic silicone implants. Um, that's the result. We've um, achieved, I believe, the breasts now look better than before the surgery. There was no misfortune, but uh, there was no fortune, but misfortune helped. Um, that's a similar situation with the previous uh, uh, patient. Again, uh, genetic um, gene-associated breast cancer. Uh, we treated her, and uh, the result obtained was uh, excellent. Uh, the tumor uh, was reduced. Uh, she had complete morphologic um, regress. She has other problems, um, uh, scoliosis. Um, However, after the surgery, subcutaneous uh, mastectomy um, on both sides, um, and after the installation of a uh, silicone implants, um, we've obtained the following aesthetic result. Besides, uh, this patient also had, uh, due to her oncology indications, adnexentamia uh, uh, for prevention. Next slide, patient with a similar condition, also breast cancer, also BRCA gene mutation. And again, first we did neoadjuvant chemotherapy for her. After chemotherapy, there was surgery uh, with um, simultaneous uh, reconstruction with such an aesthetic result. Um, that's the final slide. This patient was in a similar situation, so I won't repeat the same things. That's the way she looked before and after the surgery, subglandular installation of silicone um, implants. And that's the aesthetic result we've um, obtained. That's two weeks after the surgery. You can uh, still see the traces of uh, uh, intervention, the hematomas on the skin. And that's the way she looks a year and a half after the surgery. Conclusions. It's an effic efficacious method of surgical rehab of uh, patients with breast cancer, and it doesn't extend the uh, period of special treatment like chemo and radiotherapy. If uh, the implants are selected correctly, I mean the dimensions, the projection, one can and may obtain great aesthetic results. Thanks for the attention.